Odessa Piper offers an inventive starter from Madison, Wisconsin, a salad presented in a twill-like container of grated cheese. It's filled with greens and herbs. From Chicago, Sandro Gamba cooks the main course, seared lobster, tail and claws, garnished with a cranberry juice sauce containing mustard seed, fava beans, and cherries. Francois Payard then offers a dazzling dessert from New York, comprised of three layers of macaroon-like coconut cake. It's stuffed with ganache and glazed with more ganache. 2001 was a banner year for L'Etoile restaurant in Madison, Wisconsin. It signified the 25th year of operation for the popular upscale destination. It was also the year that owner chef Odessa Piper was awarded Best Chef Midwest by the Beard Society. Her first course is a cheese twill with salad and berries. The twill is made with grated Stravecchio cheese, a Wisconsin product that is hard, much like Parmesan. It's formed in a six inch ring. Okay. Um, I've got the ring set out on a parchment paper. It's uh, either a parchment or a sill plat will work really well. Sill plats work great. Bake at 350 until golden, about five minutes. First, herbs are added. After I've got my uh, ring set, this is just such a, a great uh, opportunity to use whole fresh herbs. I love, I love cooking with herbs and I love being able to capture a lot of their flavor and shape and resin. So I'm always looking for opportunities where I can use the leaves whole. Now this fresh thyme would be too sharp in other circumstances or for that matter this flowering oregano. But because this twill is going to bake, the herbs will bake in and the sharpness of the herbs will translate to just a beautiful savory flavor as well as a lot of beautiful color on the finished product along with the flowers. Then finally, a little bit of dill. Pretty wild, huh? But I have to let it, I have to let it cool before I shape it, so I just stay patient. It cools down very rapidly. And I'm just keep checking it with my spatula. The center is going to be the most molten part. If it stiffens up a little bit on you at this point, you can even pop it back in the oven to soften it up a bit. But it's hot, but not too hot and I'm going to just mold it into a cup shape. All right, I'm going to, I'm going to talk you through a uh, fruit coulis that I like to use as a, a really rich fruit-based vinaigrette for the Stravecchio twill filled with the salad. If you're lucky enough to get black currants, grab them for this uh, prep because they give a real depth of flavor that balances out the sweetness of the other fruits. I'm going to use less of them in proportion with the other fruits because they don't really taste all that sweet by themselves. They've got a real kind of woodsy, wild, feral flavor. But when you add them in a small amount to other things, they just all of a sudden make it a much deeper conversation. <laughs> I have some beautiful red currants. I'm going to use a bunch of those. So you can mix a little bit with the fruits, but always include blueberries, and I'll tell you why. The blueberries have pectin, and when they cook into our slurry, they're going to naturally thicken it in a way that you're really going to like. Gives it a beautiful viscosity. These are going to go into the pot, and I'm going to cook them down with a little red wine. Just make sure the wine you're using is not too heavily oaked. Ideally get a variety that has no oak in it. I'm using a Shiraz for this. About a cup. 
and that'll be enough liquid. Then I'm also going to add about uh, up to four tablespoons of sugar. You can use up to four tablespoons of sugar, um, but I'm actually, I don't like this to be too sweet. So I'm actually going to start with two, and then I'm going to taste and adjust to see if I need any more. I'm also going to use a tablespoon of a really fine fruit liqueur. You could use framboise. I use a blackberry liqueur that I import from Alsace. You can also use cassis. And we may use a little bit of this at the end also just to balance the flavors. I'll bring this up to a boil and stir it. I don't really want to reduce that wine off. Uh, I do want to cook the fruit down though and get it to all break up and loosen up from its seeds. The salad is a large number of exotic greens plus herbs and flowers. The greens are dressed with a rice vinegar grapeseed oil vinaigrette. Give it a light little toss and of course some salt and pepper. Because I used a hard aged grating cheese, I've got a really salty thing going with my twill already, which is very, very intentional. So um, I'm just going to go very minimal on salting my salad because when we put all the flavors together, there'll be plenty of salt coming from that twill. You want to do this last minute right at serve up. And I'm going to take my petals and herbs. and do just a little last minute top application. Meanwhile, the cooked fruit is forced through a china cap. The coulis is combined with grapeseed oil. My vinaigrette will go out on the outside of the plate. And the piece de la resistance, beautiful, sharp little tasting dill umbles. Because all the flavors are so insertive, these are going to just work in just fine. And there you have it. The chef de cuisine at Nomi, the fine dining venue at the Park Hyatt Chicago Hotel, is Sandro Gamba. He oversees the culinary operations of the 203-room property and manages a team of 41 chefs in three kitchens. He also tries to bring a taste of his native France to his menus. Here is seared lobster. Okay, so I'm going to cook the lobster in a court bouillon. Like this, and I'm going to cook him for three, four minutes. Depends the size. For this one, is going to be three minutes, approximately. Now my lobster is cooked. So I'm going to take off him. This. And I'm going to stop the cooking in the cold water. It's very important because we don't want to have them overcook. I'm going to clean my fresh cherries, take out the seed on the middle. The cranberry juice based sauce includes, among other things, pitted cherries. cranberry juice sauce so reduction. This I'm going to seasoning with a little salt. Little 
винега. Ще и винега. Окей. So when my cranberry juice is boring, I'm going to reduce him and have a slurry of arrowroot and water. And I'm going to make him become a little thicker. That's like a nice jelly. have to be liquid but just a little thick so like this now I'm going to add some mustache seed okay. I'm going to cook my cherries for two three minutes no more I want them to still be a little crispy And just before finish the dish, we are going to add the fava bean in the sauce. I'm going to cook him in half. The lobster will be roasted in olive oil. That's how you can see, it's still very rare. Okay, at this time, I'm going to cook the lobster two more minutes. I want him medium rare, so it doesn't go too gummy. to finish in my sauce. I'm going to add the fava bean. Okay, my lobster is ready. The plate will be garnished with wilted frise and spinach. I'm going to finish it with the lobster. A salad on the middle.
Francois Payard's hot ticket namesake in Manhattan owes its popularity in part to the chef's artistic pastries. He has some credits. In Paris, he was pastry chef at La Tour d'Argent and Lucas Carton. In New York, at Le Bernardin and Restaurant Daniel. His dessert is chocolate coconut cake. The chef starts the coconut cake by combining eggs and sugar. Note that he is doing it over direct heat. You don't burn the eggs. Every time you have to stir it, like that. And you always, if you stir it very well, you know, you make sure you don't burn. And that's the same principle than making a Genoise. Genoise or Swiss meringue. After it reaches the correct temperature, the mixture is beaten on an electric mixer. Voilà. Now it's perfect. It's like 100 degrees Fahrenheit. What we do now, turn on the flame. But we may put them in the kitchenette and you may whip to like a ribbon. Although it may take approximately like two, three minutes, you know. You have to allow the sponge to cool down. And sometimes it takes two minutes, depending if you use an end blender or if you use a kitchenette. It's not like the coconut you In this recipe, the chef uses unsweetened shredded coconut. But unsweet. Most of the time, the coconut is refined, you know. And you see the grain is very different. And it's a, it's a really strong flavor of coconut. Most of the time, what you find, you know, is the coconut like sweet and it doesn't go for the cake. If you have a sweet coconut, I think you really have to change the recipe because this one is unsweet coconut. Alors, if you don't have this coconut, maybe you should remove like a two thirds of the sugar in the sponge and using the shredded coconut. You see my cream is boiling. Now it's ready. When the cream is boiling, you pour over the chocolate. The ganache is started by pouring hot cream onto a combination of dark and milk chocolate. Allow the chocolate to melt. You stop the kitchenette. And you can see, look at the sponge, very fluffy, like a ribbon, you know, you can see. But what we do to it is very simple. Now we may fold the coconut to it. Voila, and you may get a beautiful coconut sponge. The batter goes on to greased parchment. The spatula, but you just spray everything into the pan. Normally, it should, it should fit in the half sheet tray, and it should be half of it. And you, after the cooking time, it's a sponge you raise a little bit, not too much, but it stays very nice and fluffy. Voila. Alors, the best way to spray and to use a spatula, you see, is to be a little bit of gentle like I am now. Bake at 380 degrees for about 12 minutes. Meanwhile, the ganache is completed by combining the cream and melted chocolate. Voila. See? Like before the chocolate, if you don't have a pistol like me, you just have to cho chop the chocolate very fine. And when the cream is hot enough, it's just enough to melt the chocolate. And you see, now we have a beautiful ganache. Voila. You pick it up, you put it on the table. And what you do, you have to allow it to cool down. Over here, you know, I have one already chill. Alors, I just remove from the pan with a knife, you know, just take it off, remove from the pan and upside down. What I may do now is very simple. I may trim the size. Voila. I may cut the size of the cake. And it's very important to don't keep the size because the size of the cake is where it bakes a lot, you know, and it gets a little bit to, to stick, you know, and to cook. Well, don't keep it. And after what you do, well, you just divide the cake in three. Voila. You try to make equal part. Voila. Alors now what we may do, we may fill our cake. Very simple. You have to divide the ganache for three. Voila. Oh, you see that this one is still a little bit warm, the ganache. If you like, you can keep a little bit cooler. It's much easier to use. Voila. 
Same thing on the sponge, you make sure it's nice and even everywhere. Don't worry if you fall on the side, because after we need, we need for the cake, you know. Voila. Perfect. Okay. You see now we have the three level of the cake. Voila. And now what we do, I let chill between, you know, a little bit, to make sure the chocolate stick a little bit. And we put the leftover of the ganache. Don't worry if it drip everywhere, because we have to make the size of the cake too. Voila. After the cake is covered with ganache, it's cooled, and another layer of ganache is added. Well, to the cake is very simple. You just have to pour everything over. Voila. Toasted coconut is pressed onto the cake, and a chocolate flour and fans garnish.